Heartbeat with Dr. Benita Zahn. As the opioid crisis continues claiming victims, one man is making a mark in helping to prevent kids from turning to drugs. Richard Jensen's story is one of a life reclaimed, and he shares it with students of all ages across the country. A frequent speaker in the Capital Region, he's our Health Beat guest. Good to have you with us. Thanks, good to have you. I appreciate it. You know, yours is, talk of, in, a, in many ways, it's that riches to rags to riches, if you will, emotionally, emotional story. You were a standout athlete, a wrestler. You were all set to go to college on a scholarship, but you took a summer off, and that changed your life. Yeah, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a story of struggle, it's a story of poor choices, but also at the end, it's a story of redemption and, and, and success. And that's what people need to understand is it's never too late to make a comeback. There, there I was at a high school, and, you know, the idea was just to go out fishing for a summer, make some money, and then go to college. And then I'd have some money to go to college, and I'd be wrestling, and I'd be a student. But unfortunately, I came home after three months with a drug habit and a bunch of money in my pocket without the tools to, you know, to enter college. I was, I was a little off. And then did you go back on the boats? And this is your last mugshot, basically? That is. That is. That's a good picture of me homeless in 2003 before I got sober. Yep. What happened at that point? What said to you, Richard, you cannot keep doing this? I know your mom had been ill. She passed before you got out of jail. Mm -hmm. 15, 15 years, you know, there we are from fishing 15 years later, you know, um, and uh, I was at my very bottom, uh, 15 years of addiction, prison, jail, homeless now at the time, rolling cigarettes out of the ashtray in downtown Portland, taking tobacco out of the ashtray and drying it out, that's where life had taken me. You go and you speak to kids all over the country, it's one thing to say and show them you're living by example that you can turn it around but what is it you say to them to keep them from going down the road you did well i like to share a lot about my past experience in it you know and and in and, and share with them that it takes a lot of courage courage to say no it takes a lot of courage to 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 not go down that road and i lack the courage the courage to decide that I want to find a higher level of success, that I don't want to take a chance on going down that road. And I make it really clear that every kid in that room raises their hand, they want mom and dad to be proud of them. Well, you know, if you're off sneaking off vaping and smoking and doing drugs, you know, you're taking a chance on, you're, you're, you're separating yourself from what's really important in life. You know, no kid thinks they're going to be the one who gets hooked. Right, right. You thought you were bigger than it, I'm sure. Yeah. To the kids who say that, you say what? I say, hey, listen, how, first, first thing I do is say, how many of you know somebody that's been affected by heroin or heard of somebody dying? And unfortunately, a lot of hands go up in the room, you know, and when that happens, you know, I say, you know, I talk to them about how that can happen to anybody. I was an all-star athlete. I was good home upbringing, and there I was 15 years, homeless and hopelessly addicted to methamphetamine. This can happen to anybody. They don't, do they believe you? Or do they, you still have the one sitting there with the little shoulder raised a little bit, you know? You're always going to have that small handful in the crowd that, you know, have the look. But at the end of the day, what keeps me driving is the hundreds of faces in that room that are going, oh my God, I needed to hear this message. How much do parents contribute to their kids' um, ease of making the wrong choice? You know, they, they absolve their kids from everything. We all know those parents. You know, my Johnny and my Susie would never do that. Please don't don't have that conversation. First, first part of the solution starts at home. Whether you know anything about addiction or not, it's, it's at home, connecting with your kids, teaching them about the dangers. Go on the Internet, sit down and talk about it, you know. We don't talk so much anymore, and there's a separation there. I think it starts at home. We need to talk about these issues. We need to talk about addiction. And then there's an important element that the school needs to bring it to the table also, you know. By bringing you there, they're doing that. Yep. Is there one resounding statement you want the kids to walk away from your presentations with in the back of their mind? Yeah, I, I want them to understand that, that, that I'm not that special, that they can all accomplish great things in their life if they decide to be part of this movement, part of be a champion in life and make the right choices. And I should point out, you went back to college in your 30s. 
and wrestled. I did. Finish yeah. the story, Richard. Well, you know, I was homeless at the shelter 15 years ago, and I made a decision to stay sober and chase a national wrestling championship. And through that process, I've been clean and sober 15 years now, and I did go on to become a five-time All-American national champion, and I competed at the World Championship. So it's just an incredible comeback story in wrestling and in life, and I got to fill that void inside of me that I carried for so many years and capture that championship. And before we let you go, the void, and it's interesting, I had a guest on another one of our health beats who mm -hmm. talks about that. What's the void say to you that sends you down the road you shouldn't be? You're not good enough. You're not strong enough. You don't deserve it. Insecurities kick in. But at the end of the day, there was a void that I should have been off to college in 89. And I got 15 years, and I always wondered what it would have been like if I went down the right road at that time. And um, to fill that void means going back and making a comeback. No matter win or lose on the mat, I didn't have to win because the real win was was uh, was winning my life back, you know. And sharing your and, and experience doing, now with kids. Doing what I do today. I want to thank you so very much. Thank you on behalf of the Capital Region. I know you're going to be back yeah, in a couple year. of months. And we'll keep tabs. Thank you. And if anybody's interested, ESPN, um, you were outside the lines. It was a documentary on, done on you. So you can go. Yeah, incredible. Great, great, great documentary. And you can go to BeAChampionLife.com and you can actually access videos of what I do and the ESPN documentary. Please watch it and share it with your families, you know, and your kids. Richard Jensen, making a real difference. Thank you. Thanks for